everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Shelf Reviews. This is where we're going to go through the library one shelf at a time, 125 shelves, and look at the games on each of the shelves. This is what I call Shelf 1A. It's on our first shelf in the library, and we're taking a look at A, the first of five shelves. Now, when I put shelves together, I put them together by box size often, but a little bit of some theming on how they work together, and we'll tell I'm just going to tell you why these are currently in the library. We'll start with Santa Maria. This is a game from Aporta, an excellent little game where we're placing dice and getting resources for them. This is a game that I wasn't really intrigued by when I saw the cover of it, but I ended up enjoying it quite a bit. Then we have a pair here of the Quest for El Dorado and the Quest of El Dorado, the Golden Temples, because apparently there's no Golden Temples in the original El Dorado. This is a deck building racing game from Reiner Canizia. Reiner Canizia got into the deck building game, I don't know, a decade after everybody else. But hey, these are the games that came out. I played the first one and enjoyed it, didn't love it, but I enjoyed it. And the second one I never did get around to playing, but I figured people might want to play both of them and or mix them together. Jorvik is a game I'm going to bet a lot of people are not going to pull from the library because uh, what does it mean? What's it about? It's actually a reprint of an older game where they added a second half. This is a mean, mean uh, auctioning style game where you can make things cost more for other people and uh, just, you're just, I mean, it's basically get a bunch of cards and things for victory points, but the auctioning is delightfully mean. Jumping over to Treasure Island, Treasure Island, for which I have an expansion, which I've not yet played, but Treasure Island itself is a game in which you're looking for buried treasure. Well, one player hit it, everyone else is hunting it down, and you're doing so by using uh, a compass and uh, different uh, tools, and you're drawing on a map and using deduction. It's really, really thematic. Paris New Eden is in the shelf backwards for whatever reason, um, but this is a post-apocalyptic game with dice placement. I tend to like dice placement games. This one is a fun, it's, uh, calling the game light is maybe a disservice, uh, but it is a game that you're collecting resources and people in a new, um, this is the, the most, uh, I think, uh, optimistic post-apocalyptic game out there. So, so far of these games here, I don't know that any of these are going to be hot games. I suspect the one that will get borrowed the most is either Santa Maria or El Dorado from the library. I don't see the other ones getting taken out as much, but I think they're worth putting in there. So then we have City Skylines, the board game. I hate this. I, th I, I just really despise it, but I think a lot of people will enjoy it. It's a cooperative puzzle game, and if there's lots of things I like. It's, I like cooperating with other people, and I like doing puzzles. I don't care to do them together. But in this case, I think a lot of people will play it because it's based on a very popular video game. Then we go into the Portal section here by the company Portal. So I tended to put all of his games together uh, from his very not known uh, Legacy Duke de Crecci and Alien Artifacts. Neither, neither of those games really made a big buzz, but I think they're both cool. The Legacy of, of the, or the Testament of Duke de Crecci is a game about building a legacy, uh, that's, that's the name. But it's about having a family and marrying people together and having children, and I think that's worth doing, um, or worth checking out. It's a unique game, that's why it's on the list. Alien Artifacts is a technology card building game, and apparently I'm advertising Watch It Played here on my shelf. Let's see if I can get that. No, I'm just kidding, I like Watch It Played. But um, Alien Artifacts is a good game, not enough people played it. 51st State. I'm not a huge fan of this. I think it's been replaced by Imperial Settlers, which in its own place has been replaced by Empires of the North. But in, uh, 51st State, a lot of people like it. Uh, Z Garcia enjoys it. And of course, we're gonna, it's popular enough. I think this one will be pulled off the shelf more than these two. Preta Porte, this is the new version of this, the updated version with much better artwork. Um, this is a fairly hefty, heavy game about fashion and making clothing. And um, it's not, it has like a small dedicated fan base. That's why it's in the library. Empires of the North, of course, is the most popular game of any of these, except maybe 51st State. Uh, there's, they're continually making expansions for it, and Imperial Settlers, both of these. They're similar games, but not quite the same. I love Empires of the North. I merely like Imperial Settlers. And then, of course, we have Nirishima Hex and Nirishima Hex Fantasy, also known as Monolith Arena. This one is kind of a dud. I don't think it's going to be, I mean, I know he's still making some stuff for it, but 
as far as I can tell, it's not nearly as popular as Niroshima Hex. But I don't think I'm going to be getting rid of any of these games anytime soon. I think probably the one that will get played the least is Legacy, maybe Alien Artifacts. Um, but this is a, an interesting shelf for me. It's not necessarily one I'll go to a lot, but of this shelf, my favorite game on the shelf is easily Empires of the North. I really enjoy that one. And my least favorite one is City Skylines. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil, and this has been a shelf review on the Dice Tower. Thank you.